Hello, welcome to Publishing Ponderings. Uh, this is the first in a monthly discussion panel about various aspects of uh, book marketing. Uh, and I have some fantastic guests with me today to discuss the uh, subject of newsletters. Uh, Anne, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Anne. I have books. This is them. Thank you. That's it? Shannon? Yeah. Well, okay, well, I'll take up your time. Um, hello, I'm Shannon. I write an open name of Essie Houston. Most of you may know me, but if you don't, I do have a YouTube channel under the name of Essie Houston. I am one half of the AuthorTube Writing Conference duo with Margaret Bernard, which is happening in two weeks. We are going to be having the second annual AuthorTube Writing Conference. We have a lot of great guests, so make sure you come by and stop for that. We also have an official sponsor, Fictionary, um, and they are offering one month free on their platform to all attendees. So you definitely want to come. And we have $2,800 worth of giveaway prizes to give. Wow. Yes. Um, I guess my, my efforts paid off. I still have companies getting back in touch with me who I contacted weeks ago. So <laughs> getting more, it's, 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 pretty, it's going pretty well. I'm also one third of the self-publishing tips and tricks podcast with Ben Pick and uh, from Running to Rate and Mar uh, Margaret and uh, Morgan Lee. And uh, we actually will have a, an episode coming out about uh, on the 15th about Atomic Habits. Uh, it's a very long title, but yeah, we're going to be discussing that book. And uh, yes, I am the author of the Clash of Goddesses series, which is a YA uh, Irish uh, fantasy, Irish mythology fantasy, but I am also author of the, the curse of a curse of scales and feathers, which is going coming out this month, probably in the next week. I will have what? the cover reveal. Yep, and then on the twenty second, it will be launched. So that is so um, exciting. Yeah. So w watch out for those videos as we're coming out soon uh, for the the cover reveal and the um and the pre launch and the the pre order launch. So yeah, I, I think I took up enough time. <laughs> Fine. It was actually the perfect amount of time because I don't know if you heard at the beginning of that. I have like a litter robot and of course oh. it was going off right as the stream started. And I was like, obviously, oh God, I was just going to be like, what is that noise? Like that. Rrr. And I was all like, I hope Shannon talks long. And you did. It was like perfect cycle. It was like, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is so perfect. Uh, my name is Beth. Becca C. Smith, um, I have a YouTube channel um, where I talk about writing and sewing, and I probably should be more focused, but <laughs> oh God, I'm all We're walking place on that. On the track. <laughs> and um, I, I have, I've written, I, I'm an indie author, so I've written, I think, I think the last one I just did was The Severed and the Hunted of my new, new Hexfears Chronicle series. Um, I think that's book 17 of the books that I've, I've written and published. Um, but I started out in screenwriting. Um, I did TV for a while. Um, I did comics, um, but uh, I kind of just wanted to take the power into my own hands, which is why I went into indie publishing. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's me in a nutshell. Have you read the, <laughs> I don't know the whole book title, but it's called Popcorn Methods or something like that just came out. Um, it's a screenwriter who wrote a book for writers and the things that he learned from screenwriting and applying that to a, as being a writer. I definitely switch back and forth. Like it, it helps me, like if I, if I really want to understand more about my characters, I write it in book form. If I want to really make sure I stay present within the action, I, I write the screenplay version. So I tend to have like versions of both of my stories in both a screenplay and a uh and a book um because it it really does like it, it can help when you do both formats because they really are just formats writing is writing right so when you do both formats it kind of trains your brain to think a certain way so they you definitely complement each other so i highly recommend trying all formats <laughs> and comics too because you know when you're writing the the dialogue and the if you're going to draw it, then it's different because you know exactly what you're going to draw. But like the way I did it, I had an artist, so I had to basically write exactly what I wanted them to draw. So it's all it's all fun. Like I love doing all the different formats. I've done a fair few of those myself and um, could just talk to you about that for hours. But that's not why we're here. Um, for those that don't know me, I am one half of Bradley Lejeune, the uh, author duo behind the McMurdo Riff series. Um, I'm not the other half, if that came off that way. I just have books. somewhat <laughs> implied. Um, I'm not. 
Uh, no, no, no one, no one's ever actually seen Malcolm Bradley. So, uh, I mean, does yeah, he ever do anything for you? Good. See him on my channel because I interviewed both you guys. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. Um, and I would like to uh, say thank you to everyone who's uh, taken time out of their busy day to come and uh, hear what we have to say. Uh, hello, Inca. Hello, Lauren Adele. Hello, Emma Bennett. Easy Graphics. And uh, we've got CB394, Richard Holiday, uh, Ty Williams, Nina's here. Uh, Mama Maggie, thank you all so much. Um, Hananya. Hananya, stop by for a second. So, um, right. does everyone have a newsletter? Technically, yes. Yeah, I, I just it's it's definitely needs more love. Is I, I that's why that's why I was really excited about this stream because I, I like I said I want to learn more about how to make it successful because I've never really had much luck making my newsletter successful or at least in a way that would you know equate to readers and sales and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to sort that right out. Um, <laughs> that is not a legal obligation. Please don't sue me. And and spent the <laughs> afternoon trying to encourage people to take legal action. If they I just told them not to sue me. <laughs> they want to sue you. Um, yeah, I don't want anyone to feel like obliged to um, announce any stats or anything. I don't want to. Um, for me, I started my author newsletter uh, a little over a year ago. Um, uh, or no, about a year and a half, uh, actually, because I sort of had it for about three months where it was just pretty much my reading it and a couple of mates. And uh, it was almost in like practice mode. Um, one of uh, the biggest points for me was deciding whether to go with story origin or book funnel and actually you know subscribing to one of those for a year up front and um uh once i sort of made that decision which i really don't think there's much in it either way um but uh we will circle back to that a bit later um and how long have you had your newsletter are you happy with how it goes Do you send to them often I honestly don't know how long I've had my blue setter, probably also a year and a half, maybe even longer than that. But I remember I started using it shortly before I started publishing my series, which that's been about a year. And I actually use Wix, which is my website provider. They have an email service and it's free up until a specific point where you get to send out like three emails a month or something like that. Like they would want you to sign up to their newsletter thingy thing where you would get more emails and you know more space and whatever but none of that has been necessary for me yet because I have very few subscribers because I never talk about my newsletter and I also don't have anything that people care about in it so um I would say it's it's great my dad keeps up with it um you know three of my friends and um that's about it um Shannon, I'm just going to say up front that you are widely successful and uh, you were very very helpful with me when I was getting mine off the ground. Yeah. Um, and I would say, I think a lot of people feel the way you do, Anne, whereas like no one really cares about it, but that's not actually the truth because if you do have people who like your writing, they're going to care about whatever it is you're saying. So it's, it's just trying to figure out how to connect to them and then them connect to you. And I think that that's the big thing. Then you'll be able to see the value, I think more. And I think people will see the value more that having a newsletter when they see that connection happening. Um, but yeah, I started my newsletter in, um, I think, I don't know the exact dates, but I know it was July of 2021. And for about three months, I also had seven people or six people on my newsletter list. And three of them were me and my husband. Um, I had two email addresses, you know, signed up to me. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it was uh, slow going. And then I just, I just kept doing a lot of research into how to build my newsletter. Um, came across Story Origin and Voracious Readers Only right about the same time. I still use both to build my newsletter list every month. And um, I got as high as like, it was, it was almost 8,000 people on my list. And it, I had a huge proportion who were not doing anything. They weren't opening. And this was on MailChimp where at, at that time, 2,000 you were paying. And I thought, well, I'm not paying above 2,000. So let me start, you know, going through this. And I, I got rid of like 2,000, 2,500, somewhere between there I got rid of. And uh, I've learned later from other people that, you know, it's better not to get rid of them because when you do get to a point where you're able to pay for your newsletter list and sustain it, it's always nice to have those people because they may be people who are like, just tell me when you have something to buy. 
and, you know, they may not open every newsletter. They just want to know when you have something to buy. Um, so, um, after that, after I heard that bit of advice, I didn't, I didn't delete anyone anymore, but I did archive, which kind of did the same thing on MailChimp where you didn't have to pay for them. So regularly I choose, um, I have 2000, a core group of 2000 who pretty much open all my newsletter. So I use them and I regularly go through my archived ones and pull out about 500 every time I send out a newsletter to send them a newsletter, see if they open. And if they don't open, they go back into my archive. So I'm, I'm constantly working with my newsletter list. I'm actually, so um, going to um, go completely go against your advice and I will be removing people who haven't opened for six months. Well, and, and you're on Mailer right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's the same there, but on MailChimp, you, you know, you start paying after 2000. Now it's a smaller number, but um, if you're our, if you have this sub archived, it doesn't count for your number and you don't have to pay for it. I don't know if the same is on Mailer Lite. So if you don't have to pay for your archived contacts, I would keep them and just pull them out every now and then when you, you know, see, see what gets their fancy. I've also pulled some out just to send them a question, which I would say that's one of the best ways to connect to your readers is to ask them a question in your genre. They signed up to you for your genre, what you're writing. So you ask them. And to this day, my best question I asked was I'm trying to figure out other shifters to put into my fantasy romance. What is your favorite shifter? And that, oh my gosh, I got a flood of emails on that one. It was, it was hard to keep up. <laughs> so, but yeah. Sorry, Becca, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, not at all. I was actually going to ask a question um, because that's kind of one of the things that I debate about because I, I have I have MailChimp. That's what I, I was on. But when thinking about growing, right, like the future, mm -hmm. like I know it's far off and it takes a long time to get there. But like you were talking about the paid system, it doesn't feel like unless you're really like for me, it feels like. Um, in terms of turning readers into sales, right? If you're not releasing a certain amount of books a year, um, you're not really selling anything except maybe your old uh, or your your backlog or back back you know kind of thing. And the thing is, is that once you grow on MailerLite or 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 Mailchimp, it can become so expensive and, and you're not really going to be making that money back because you're not making the sales because you're not you know producing books every month you know what i mean it's not like a product right where it's all like you know you want this you know i can't uh, like a microphone i was talking about the day on the other day like a microphone right and it's like you get the sales and you're like looking for the specific microphone and then the newsletter comes out and they're like it's on sale and you're like yes okay i can finally get this microphone kind of thing it's, it's harder with books. That's that's what I've found anyway. So, and because the thing is, is that like, let's say you were lucky enough to get 100,000 subscribers, which is amazing, right? But to use MailChimp for these things, that's like $700 a month. Yeah. Wow. And so it kind of defeats the, or at least makes me feel like I don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the, if I grow t fast too much, then I, I don't, even at 10,000, subscribers it's a hundred dollars a month and unless i'm releasing like you know doing like a fast release or whatever or kind of like releasing books every month i don't see how that would would be like where, where i would make the money back in that sense so what what do you guys think about have, that like in terms of of, of those sites yeah so, yeah let me yeah because i'm curious because it's just like oh my god it just becomes astronomical like the more you grow it's all like defeating in a way right yeah. I, I, and it is because the very first time like i had my second book come out my series and i said hey it's my newsletter it's on sale i had a ton of sales and i'd say that worked so much better than all the market i did but over the next couple months it wasn't like i grew right. by thousands of people who went to go ahead and buy the book again you know i mean i've already sold to my newsletter list so now to have it month to month i'm not doing anything unless i have something new but something i want to i would really really want to do and if i knew if you do not have a newsletter i would suggest this first which is use something, a different platform with like Substack because you can use that as your email. People can sign up and it's free. Yes. yes. So yeah. if I could do that over again, and, that's and what I would do. Uh-huh. Yeah, because that, that, that was what I was looking into with Substack. That's interesting you say that because Substack, it, it's like they want you to have like 200,000, 300,000 yeah. because the more you have, the more potential, if you do end up doing paid content with them, the yeah. more money they'll make, you know, it's almost like a, like a cross between Patreon yeah. and, you know, and that kind of thing. 
So, so okay, it, so another one is so you. I'm sorry. Which one is it? Uh, Reem. I have not done it yet, but Inka was in the chat and she has Reem. And I think the way they're setting that up, it's just now out of beta okay. phase. Um, I think the way they're setting that up is like a Patreon, but it's for authors for their readers. And that might also help to supp supplement the newsletter or to replace it. I don't know yet because I haven't been on the platform to play around with it, but Inka has a lot of information on that. Okay. Would you consider switching to Substack? At this point where I'm at right now, I don't have the time for it. But if I was starting over, I would. Yeah, I would. So. Yeah, see, no, I'm kind of like, because I, I have, like I said, I have a base, but it's not, I don't think it's big enough or people, like, I mean, these people can be from like, I mean, I don't even know when I started this thing, like 10 years ago. So some of these people like might not even like have the same email. So I don't even know how, I don't even think my list is that valuable. So I, I'm thinking about starting over. So you would suggest Substack. Well, I suggest as an, because I've not done it, I can't say, yes, go do this one. This is what you should be doing. I can't say that. But from everything that I've read, I've, I've read I've read some authors who are doing newsletters through Substack. So I've gone to Substack and checked it out. I've not used it myself yet. But if I if I was starting now, I would use Substack first. I would try it first and see how it does. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's interesting. <laughs> you have been talking about them, right? It seems like you're very interested in them, Becca, despite what other people are saying, or like regardless of what they're saying anyway, right? So it would be worth a shot for you, even just for your own interest. I mean, I definitely, yeah, it definitely of the things that I've, you know, been researching, trying to figure out what kind of newsletter I want to do or, or what I want to do, Substack's definitely been on the top just because of their model. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like I, I know I wouldn't have like that amount of subscribers right away or even maybe in five, 10 years. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it would take a long time, but I like having something that I like that you, that it's a, you're rewarded for growing as opposed to kind of feeling like being punished for growing mm -hmm. because you have to now pay $700 a month you have a hundred thousand subscribers, you know, and it's like, and I get how that makes sense. Like I said, if you are selling a product, something that's like a phone, you know, that, you know, people are going to be like buying, like anytime they see the news that they're like, Oh, sale, got it. Let's do this. You know, and, and you're going to be making sales every, every single time you release that newsletter. So in those cases, I completely understand like why that system is the way it is, you know, but in terms for what, books, what I would like, say for you, Becca, you, know, you have 17 books. Do you, do you go on Kindle at all to see, no. do you, is your book on Kindle, not KU, just Kindle? So can you see what people are, are highlighting as popular? Yeah, yeah it's highlights? wide, so but it is on Kindle. Yeah. Okay, so go and look at your popular highlights. Pull yes. those out. Put those on coffee mugs. Put them on notebooks. Put them on journals. Make a store. And that way, people always have something they can buy from. A good person who's doing this, she teams up with two other authors, is LJ Andrews. And I trying to remember the name of the store, but if you sign up to her newsletter, you'll, her store is on there. It's about to close because they're doing some renovations on their online store, but they, they got tons of stuff that they've just pulled from their books and the character artwork that they've done for their launches. Now they sell it. And um, I know she was just talking about, they write romance and they write spicy fantasy romance. Um, or at least she does. One's a contemporary romance writer, but that's sweet, but she writes. So she's, she's like talking about last newsletter, how they're putting the, together a box that is just all the um, NSFW stuff for, um, the spicy romance section of her fantasy books. Yeah, you have tons of books. You have a lot of stuff you can pull from. Um, find out what your reader, if you don't know what readers like, do that. That's a way to engage with your newsletter list. Do a poll with them. Hey, you guys, have you read this book? What was your favorite part of it? Um, yeah, I would do things like that. I know it's okay. it's not writing, but I think the independent author today is not going to make a living from writing so much as if they can get invested in other things that go along with their writing. That's my thought anyways. Yeah, multiples. You may not want to do the I merch. Agree. I know some people I don't know. worry about doing merch, but um, that is one way to have constant sales going if people want it. Yeah, I have journals made for like I do books. have a red bubble, but I'm sorry, I think we're uh, nice. I think we're rocking a little bit here. Yeah, oh no, I was just um, saying, like, I, I, I have a red bubble, but like, I haven't pulled anything from it yet, but. <laughs> What is the red bubble? Do you want to link it? Put it in private chat or put it in chat. I think it's Margaret says, I don't want to grow. <laughs> Becca speaking for <laughs> entertainment and all of us.
Anne, is there any sort of um, content you've put in your newsletters um, that's been particularly uh, successful for you or anything to avoid? No, see, I was very influenced, and I feel like this happens to a lot of people, by people that I was watching at the time of making my newsletter. And there were a couple of people that were, you know, very good friends. They had very similar things that they were offering, and they were marketing to both authors and readers. So they'd be like, oh, I have something for both types of people. Because I, I feel like we talked about this just yesterday, back where we were like, do you market to authors? Do you market to readers? What, you know, um, it's an issue sometimes. And so I was like, well, I, I need to do both, right? So technically i have a bunch of things like i have playlists where i compile resources for authors and then i have short stories and stuff like that but i don't really think anyone really cares because all the people that come in and are subscribed to my newsletter are friends of mine like there's like three people on my newsletter list that i don't know so like nobody is there for the content they're all there because they're my friends and they want to support me <laughs> so i don't think anything i've done has really drawn anyone in and that's my fault maybe if i had something more interesting it would pull people in or even if i just talked about it more i don't think i've mentioned my newsletter ever ever so. i rarely mention my newsletter i just put up a post on instagram yesterday it's the first time i think i've ever talked about my newsletter on instagram <laughs> so and you had something special that was new to newsletter subscribers, but, right? Like you had a story yeah, or something? I had a short story, yeah. Because I technically have short stories. I, but do you... So, yeah, no, oh, go sorry. ahead. What were you saying? You're fine. I was going to say, so use book funnel or story origin to get the subscribers then? Because you don't talk, you don't use your other social media to get I use story origin and um, uh, voracious readers only. Okay. Because then you're going outside of the circle. Because, yeah, Anna and I were talking about that the other day. Yeah. Hey, it's like we want to go outside of – it's great to have the support, of course, hello, from all of our friends and community. That's priceless. Yeah. But the goal is to, you know, to reach out to the readers that read, you know, the genre that you write and, like, the kind of books that you write. So so you would you would recommend – the yeah, because I've uh, my friend uses book funnel romances and that really works for her yeah i um, found um, i'm part of the fantasy romance community now on discord and they use book funnel so i'm like great i'm gonna have to go on book funnel too <laughs> i mean more the merrier right <laughs> money out the door <laughs> i know i know right. i know that's what i'm saying in ah yeah that's what i struggle with the downside to either of these platforms is they are around a hundred dollars a year subscription, but um, they do, uh, you know, help you find new readers in a way that nothing else quite uh, compares to. You know, Story Origin is offering three one-year free subscriptions during the AuthorTube Writing Conference, by the way. Oh. And um, oh, that's good. You know, and, and like uh, some people like uh, Mark Dawson uh, talk about using paid ads for a uh, newsletter builder, which can work, but is not going to be anywhere near as cheap as what you'd be paying uh, on Story Origin to get your name out there. And the way it works is people are subscribed to authors' newsletters Authors will either do a straight up swap where they mention your book in exchange for you mentioning their book, and they do uh, promos where there'll be a banner with a graphic saying, uh, you know, uh, June giveaways, uh, which they can then click on, and there will be uh, dozens of people's uh, books, uh, which would be their reader magnets, where you have a short story or a novel that you give away for free in exchange for a sign up. And this is how you can then build your uh, newsletter, uh, you know, to quite a big way, you know, quite quickly. If you, um, you know, if you write a good short story, if you market it well, if you get a nice cover and if you get into the right promos, um, you know, you can get your books into front of a lot of people. Would you say your short story does all of those things, takes those boxes? Uh, yeah, I've had, um, you know, months where I've got in the right promos and got about 100 subscribers each month. Um, 
I, I don't know how book funnel set up. I know in story origin, when you do swaps with people, like if you're, you have a paid subscription, you can see all the other authors on there. You can see what they're writing. You can see their email address. You can email them and just begin in swaps with some people. Um, I've, I've actually made contacts as well. And we've set, we set up other things that we do outside of story origin where we're trying to promote each other's books. So um, it is a good place to also, you know, build that community of uh, like-minded writers trying to reach readers. Yeah, and um, it really allows you to uh, really find specifically people who are writing mm -hmm. the kind of stuff you're writing, yeah. and you know if they've got a, you know a list, those are people who will be exactly the people you want to get your book in front of, um, which is exponentially more valuable than taking out an ad on Amazon or Facebook and you know throwing it into the wind. Everybody. <laughs> I would also say, um, is it a any... little bit more? Go ahead. I say, Becca, I know you said that. I was just saying, please. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Yeah. You go, you go. I'm sorry. You go. Well, there's a delay. So yeah, it's like, is. I'll start it. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, wait, are we? Yeah, no, I was just saying Facebook ads can be more targeted. Like you can actually specify what readers want to but the problem being not a lot of people are uh, a lot of, a lot of the same people that used to find books on Facebook aren't even on Facebook anymore so I feel like that's kind of a, a dead market in terms of ads <laughs> at least that's what people are saying I mean you know who knows I, I I, I, with story origin though you have tags you can put onto your books five tags and so that you can get instead of just all romance readers or just all fantasy romance readers you could be fantasy romance readers with um, a fairy tale retelling so you could get more specific on on origin. I think sorry, origin. I think you can with some of the ads. Um, but uh, I was gonna say, you know, we, we we were talking about the value of a newsletter list of selling your books, but it does have other values because another concern for a lot of indie authors is where do I get readers from? To like, you know, arc readers, alpha readers, beta readers. When I wrote my first trilogy, I paid for beta readers and I scrounged around trying to find some beta readers that didn't always end up being very good. But now that I had my robust list, when I was getting looking for readers for this book that's coming out. I had a ton of people sign up for my newsletter list. So yeah. that that is the other value to it. Yeah. yeah. Using it for other things besides sales. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, that's where my brain is at. Like yeah. I, I would want to use it for sales. Um, and so that, <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's why, that's why I was saying that the sub stack is, is appealing yeah. because ultimately if you become successful at Substack, you're making money on the Substack itself, right? And so it's like, not only are, would you potentially be making money off of people, you know, reading your newsletter and wanting your books. I guess the, the problem for me is I, I tend to write like a book a year. Like that's my pace. Um, so I, I'll, I, I'll never be the kind of person that can I mean, maybe if I wrote shorter books or something, I could probably release more than that. But in terms of newsletters, and a lot of times, sometimes I feel like I just have nothing to say that I don't say yeah. on my YouTube channel, or my Instagram or whatever. And then I feel like I'm just repeating myself and like, oh, I just said all that on my vlog. And now people are going to read the same people that watch my vlog or the same people who are subscribed to my newsletter. You know what I mean? It's like this cyclical. Yeah, the, the, your YouTube channel and your IG, is that for writers or readers? Well, that's the thing is that I feel like so far with my newsletter experience so far, I've just basically gotten other writers. And so that's why I was saying that that, that what's sort of throwing me off with the story origin and stuff like that is it does seem like you're still connecting to other writers. Yeah, but you're um, still just getting in front of readers. You're con you're so, making that connection, but so, you're doing so it. So how do the readers find story origin? Do they, do they, do they find the books there or where are they well, getting, like, where yeah. is that coming from? It comes from your newsletter list. So like I go to story origin and, um, you know, everyone can see my newsletter list or you can, you can put it where your newsletter list numbers are. So like, say, you know, I think it's like 5,500 or something, somewhere around that numbers right there. Um, so that's what I have. So someone else can say, Oh, I want to do a swap with you. I have like 3000. So we're doing a reader right. magnet swap. In order to get the reader magnet, they have to sign up onto your newsletter list. So I got a potential of 3,000 new readers coming to me from that other author. We're just using the platform to connect. Okay. But so then, but where did you get the readers then? From other authors using the platform and I connected with them. 
I know, but like then where like where does it all start? Like like where did the original numbers come from for the readers? Well, I've also done some um, builders, some uh, newsletter builders. So the majority, I got like, um, I think it was like 5,800 names I got from a newsletter builder I did. Um, it was just a one-off. It wasn't something that was done all the time. Last okay. year, uh, I had met Dale L. Roberts a year before. He was like, hey, we're, we're doing this huge newsletter builder for fantasy authors. Um, do you want to, you know, donate or be part of it? And, and it cost $75 to be part of it, but I got a ton of readers from it. So, and of course, a ton of, when you do a newsletter builder, it doesn't matter which one you do, you're going to lose a whole bunch, a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so, um, especially when you have, I mean, we got 5,800 newsletter. We had like, I don't remember how many authors were involved. I think it was like 20 authors or something like that was involved. So when you, when you, when you sign up to this like newsletter builder, you're signing up to all 20 authors, you're getting an email from all 20 authors at the same time. You're going to have people who get overwhelmed and fatigue and they're going to unsubscribe. So it happens, but that's where I've also built a lot of my newsletter up. I've done um, three big builders like that in the past to build up my newsletter list. And then there are um, like one-offs like here and there. So there's two companies I work with. Well, one's a, 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 an author guy, but he just runs it like a company where he does newsletter builders for sci-fi and fantasy. Um, and then Reign of Reads is a company that does newsletter builders for sci-fi and fantasy. But I think they're trying to add, I think they might have added another genre recently. They were built off of sci-fi and fantasy, but they have newsletter builders. And then they also have giveaways and stuff like that. I've done a giveaways. I've done a couple of giveaways um, so to build my newsletter list. So I've gotten from outside of story origin as well. And, you know, like that. All of this costs money, though. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I know. That's yeah. Yeah. And is it worth it? Do you, you see, do you find it's worth it in terms of sales? Like, do you find that you've made your money back or do you think it's still an investment stage? I, I made my money back on like a couple months when I had new work coming out. <laughs> so okay. but I haven't published right, anything right. new for a year. So I, I don't have, you know, I did it. My, my box set came out and I had just a couple sales. That was it for my newsletter list. Cause I think most of them already had in my whole series. Why would they get the box set? Yeah. Okay. No, it's like that's the only problem with books is you can't keep on selling it. Like, come on, just buy it again. Don't you want it again? <laughs> yeah. What works really well is um, having an automated sequence of emails that go out as you are in these swaps and these promos and you get more people signing up. Uh, you get an automated email that goes out, goes, thanks for signing up. Here's your um, free book. Um, but rather than stopping there, instead of putting them directly onto your list, you have, um, you know, two or three or five. Um, so a couple of days later, you sort of follow it up and you, yeah, and you can have five. No need to go bug-eyed. Um, Sorry. You can, um, you, you, you send an email a couple of days later going, uh, hey, did you enjoy the free book? And, um, you know, most people completely ignore it. A couple of people write back and go, oh, haven't read it yet. And a couple of people will go, uh, you know, somewhere on the scale of, yeah, it was great. No, I didn't like it. You know, and then you've got I also have some who say, who say, can you remind me in two more weeks? I've had emails like that. Okay. <laughs> See, I was going to okay. argue if you sent me an email five days later, I forgot who you are and that you exist. But maybe that's more of a me issue and not a general person <laughs> issue. No. Well, um, that's already uh, more regularly yeah, than a lot of hard. people send out uh, newsletters. Um, and one of the important things <laughs> with an onboarding sequence is, um, and you can, uh, with some uh, hosts, set this up really specifically. Uh, so you want to say, hello again, you subscribed to this because you, you, uh, you know, joined a story origin uh, swap or because you um, subscribed on my website, you know, and you can set up different automations to tell them that, but you want to um, remind people why they're there. So they don't just go, ah, spam. Um, right, and, right. You know, it both lets people know, uh, familiarize themselves with you and what you're talking about, but it also, um, you know, gives you these opportunities to, form connections and you know it'll probably only be you know one percent of people who actually do this but i actually have a handful of readers now who will just um email me every couple of weeks yep. and we'll have you know completely unrelated conversations 
It's a way right. of being connected. That's you know, nice. Yeah. When you build up those relationships, then this came from one of my newsletter writers, a reader. Sorry, she liked to do artwork, and we were talking about arts and stuff. And she's like, "Oh, I do artwork." I was like, "Oh, what do you do?" And so she sent me some stuff on. She had a dragon. I was like, "Oh, I would love a blue dragon." I was like, "I'll pay for it. Do you sell it?" She's from the UK, and she did not charge me, and she sent this to me. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and I said, "I'll pay for it." That's amazing. That's really beautiful. I asked her if I could put it on my YouTube channel and talk about it. She's like, yeah, go ahead. Of course. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. One thing I would say too, with the newsletter sequence, I don't know if, uh, if you were, were um, done with your thought there, uh, Martin, but like Rebecca, like if I had 17 books, my newsletter sequence would be a year long because you can talk about each book in every newsletter. And that way you don't even have to worry about trying to come up with new content for new people coming on your list. I mean, the only time you would specifically email them anything different would be if you had a sale or something going on. Right, right. Oh, man, that's hard. because Once you set it, it, like, it would take know, time I mean, to set it up. But once you set it up, it's done. And so when you bring yeah, new people yeah. into the newsletter list for the next, you know, they're they're good. They don't need anything new for the next year or so. Yeah. Right. And right. it's also a great that's opportunity to invite people to be part of your street team. Yeah. And your arc team and stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. And yeah, I usually, I, 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 kind of, I was going to say, I, 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 for that kind of stuff, like arcs, betas, things like that, I've, I've been lucky to be able to use that with, um, with YouTube. Um, because mm -hmm. people, I, I just feel like, I guess maybe because it's like, I just have made strong you know, I put more effort. I mean, I don't know, like more of my time has been spent nurturing my YouTube account over the years, probably not so much mm -hmm. in the last year, but you know what I mean? Like over the, over the years before, you know, that like, uh, that, that I find that, uh, people are really open to that and have been so helpful. Like, I mean, I had, I really needed beta readers, um, my most recent book and um because i was kind of at that like back when i first finished the draft because i had given it to my two cps and and they gave me great notes but i just knew something was missing i just didn't know what and so so um i asked youtube and i got i think i got like 30 people that nice. um that agreed to beta read it and so it was really like it was a good amount for me you know yeah. because then it was like had like enough of opinions that would match and then some that just were different and then one girl in particular she just like blew my mind and like I was just like what and it and it totally it formed my rewrite um because she really opened my eyes to some things that I was like oh my god yeah I should that's it that's what I need to do so you're saying newsletters can kind of do the same thing in the sense of connecting to people that would, you know, be open to beta mm -hmm. reading, arc reading, you know, all that stuff, street team and stuff. Yeah, okay, I could see. Like, I, it's good to have more than one, especially since I haven't really been nurturing my YouTube account. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't even know what people would do if I did ask at this point. Um, but yeah, I would like to have another source of community in that sense. I never really I thought about newsletters as community, so I like that. Uh, Becca Simon says that that's one of the futures going for authors because we've been a horizontal publishing um, idea, like where you know get do Facebook ads, Amazon ads, you'll get your book out there, it'll get in front of people. But now visibility is getting so hard that we need vertical platforms where we're connecting more to readers one on one and treating them as a community versus a number to to buy something. Yeah, 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 for sure, it's changed. Like when I first did it, I was telling Ann this the other day. When I first did it. I was like, wow, self-publishing is pretty easy <laughs> because I did it like in 2009, 2010 when it was just like the glory years, right? You know, you do ads, they work. You do this, it works. You do this, yeah. it works. Everything works. And it was great. Like I did, uh, I was telling Ann that I did BookBub in a beta phase, right? And so like one day, Riser, my first book, I had like, I can't. 40 50 000 downloads and it was just like in one day like i ended up getting into the i think i was number three for the entire amazon mm -hmm. ebook store. famous author you know, I, <laughs> but the 
that's what I'm saying. It's like that's what it was like. And yeah, then they around 2015, yeah. 2015, 2015, it went away completely. Like it became so oversized. Ads didn't work anymore. Uh, Bookbub still works, but they won't let you on. And like, you know, I like I still had kind of like because I had a relationship with them. I was I think the last Bookbub I was able to do was like 2018 or something. But since then, never again. Right. And so it's like and I don't even know if I'd want to at this point, because now it's like crazy expensive. When I did it, it was 50 bucks. Oh, wow. <laughs> and nice. I don't know if you've been on BookBub, but now it's like yeah, two it's grand or something. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was insane. So it was it was different. So having to adjust and trying to come up with something in in. in you know, wanting to come up with something new, you know, because I feel like at some point something new, you know, is going to come along. And I, sometimes I feel like by the time we hear about it, it's too late. So it's like, it's kind of wanting to come up with something, you know, do something different because the old system isn't working like it used to. It still works, but it doesn't work like it used to. And I don't mean to be like a downer. I'm What's saying like, I believe. Yeah. What were you saying? Is, you know, once you've got that list, um, you know, then it can't just go the way of MySpace um, because you can mm -hmm. always just put it in a uh, spreadsheet <laughs> and, um, you know, keep emailing them um, on whatever comes next. And I wouldn't worry about repeating yourself on different platforms. Like the amount of times that I've shouted from the rooftops about having a book out everywhere and then run into a friend in the street and they're like, oh, you write books? And, and I'm like, yeah, didn't you see that and that and that and that every hour for the last week? And they're like, no. I, I just was listening to Russell Nolte say that yesterday. He was saying how he he told everyone that about the first Kickstarter campaign he did like a few years ago. He told everyone. He just blasted out there on every platform he could. And he still came across people was like, oh, you did a Kickstarter? <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So what do you guys think about Kickstarter? Because that seemed to be like something that was happening. I've Because I've used Kickstarter before, but that was like, and I have used it for books, but not like books directly. Like when I wanted to, when I wanted a booth back in like 2012 or something for uh, the LA Festival of Books. They have like a big book festival here every year. And I wanted to get a booth there for our publishing company. And, um, and I did a Kickstarter for it to get the, and, and it, you know, it was, it was good. It was successful. It worked. But like people using it for actually making books. That's like, I think the people that can't afford to publish otherwise, I'm great with that. People that are already multimillionaires with tons of books out and the backing of multiple publishers behind them, questionable. Yeah, but it helps in the authors because now they're self-published and that gives us legitimacy. So you it's also get everybody who signs up, you get all their email addresses. And you get all their emails. You do? It's true. Yeah, me too. But back then, it was if you've got the audience, it's really, you know, it can really work, um, but it's not necessarily the best place to build one. It's like if you can send yeah, people to, a, if you can send people to the platform, then Kickstarter's algorithm will go, hey, what's this fresh new flavor? And then we'll then bring more people yeah. uh, to you. Um, so it's a sort of like, you know, the people it really helps are not necessarily the people who most need the help. Right. Um, yeah. In terms of like getting off the ground. It, it's yeah. definitely be useful for someone who is got, you know, something started with their newsletter list. They've got a good, you know, base to, to work off of. So, okay. Um, I am actually, I'll say, it, I think on air for the first time, I'm doing a Kickstarter with my book. Nice. You, you are. are. Okay. Exclusive. Yes. So I will be, um, I, I told my newsletter list. So for those who are my newsletter, you know, already, <laughs> which I know Martin, you're, you're signed up. For <laughs> um, but he already knew because I told him before. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing a Kickstarter for it because I'm $4,000 in debt with my first series still. Five and, and a like half. Almost, five and a half. Yeah. I don't want to be in debt with this next series because I can't continue publishing that way. If I continue publishing that way, it's, it's, 
you know, I, I don't need the money, but I can't let money keep leaking out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. What are you offering? That's where I'm at too. Like copies of the book for people? There's going to be, there's the book, there's character art, wallpaper, digital, um, a coloring book, pages. Um, I am trying my hand at making scented candles because my two, uh, it's fantasy romance. So um, Aries lavender smell. So she's a lavender smell candle. And I got dragon's blood for my dragon king. Um, and I'm making those candles. Uh, I was going to try and make them tomorrow, I think, and see how they turn out. And I bought like different um, like metallic resins and stuff to put into it. So um, I'm going to see how it turns out. I don't know. If they turn out, they'll be on my Kickstarter, but I don't know if they will. Um, I also have a <laughs> cinematic trailer made cool. of my map. Um, animated. Uh, uh, my book cover's getting animated, so it's going to be like an animation. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of few things. I have quite a few things on there. That sounds really cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, Ty, oh, yeah, so she's also going to make I always wanted to make yeah, in the chat, Ty is saying that uh, some authors will even do seasonal Kickstarters. Um, yeah, like Will of Winters. I've, I've seen her. She's like published like 50 plus books and she does them every once in a while where she does like bindings of an entire series as a special edition and she does those on Kickstarter. And then she has the entire collection that she's written and does those two. Like she numbered them all through like, I don't know, one to 53 or something. And then you can buy the entire thing, yeah. which otherwise you'd have to buy like every individual book. So she's like, well, I'm giving you this entire thing as the Kickstarter. So you don't and have to buy 50 books. Fantasy romance, you know, it's a, it's a group fantasy romance. Faro, 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 February. Um, so February, they do a bunch of them. will do Kickstarters in February. So I'm hoping to do my next one then for my next book. But I'm also offering all of my backlists with the Kickstarter as well. Okay. Shannon, when you're writing a newsletter, um, not an onboarding sequence, but just like your regular scheduled, how hard do you push mentions of your book versus just being conversational? I rarely mention my book unless I have something going on, like a sale or whatever. But I don't even mention every sale because I put my book on sale like every month for the first year. All three books, I put them on sale every month for the first year. I'm not doing that as much now, but I would, I actually did it as an experiment last year where I put my books on sale for one month and I only told my newsletter. The next month I use um, social media and the next month I use a, um, a, a marketing company just to see how many books. And I sold the most to my newsletter. That's how I knew my newsletter was really good. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I, I rarely mention, I don't mention like, hey, go buy my book, but I will say what I'm working on. So um, the one I sent out yesterday, that was about my book because I'm about to do the Kickstarter. I also wanted my my email list to be aware that while my Kickstarter is going on, I'm going to be sending almost daily emails. And so that I said, you, oh, wow. you're welcome to ignore them if you want to, um, if, if you're not interested. And um, don't you think so risky? Sending a daily, like I, I would get annoyed with that and unsubscribe. Yeah, so um, I did have a few extra unsubscribes. I always have unsubscribes every every newsletter I send out, and I had a few extra. So I think those by telling them ahead of time, I think they're prepared. Those who are like, "Yep, this is not for me. I'm out. I have left." Um, so yeah, but they, it is a. Very, I am working with Russell Nolte and Monica Leonel. They're really good with Kickstarters, right? They regularly, I would say, their average is probably around twenty thousand, um, is what they get off of their Kickstarters. So, um, yeah, they, they make a lot of money. I don't think I'm gonna make that much money, but, um, right. I'm hoping to, to, my goal is a thousand. That's what my goal is. So that'd be nice if I could hit a thousand. <laughs> They'll pay for the book covers and all this stuff I'm doing with it and, and, and the other things that I'm doing to, to produce the book. Um, so yeah, so of course I talked about my, my, my book and that, but you should just talk about like what's going on. The newsletter before that, it was too long, but I put, um, I put like an, my favorite excerpt from my current, this book that's about to be out, but my favorite excerpt in there. I was like, hey, by the way, this is my favorite my favorite passage right now. Um, but, you know, I, I usually talk about whatever's going on in my writing life and plans and things like that. And sometimes it's not anything. Because I think that one I also talked about the origins of Mother Day because that was in May, Mother's Day. So I talked about the origins, the magical origins of Mother's Day. But that newsletter did not go over very well. <laughs> Just so you guys know, that was not a good topic. You get those, you'll try different things and some will work really, really well. And other ones they flop and you're like, why didn't that work? The majority That's of my so people funny. are I wonder why. women, so. I, huh. I remember that last minute I had to write yeah, one. Yeah, that was um, 
the great thing about story origin and organizing swaps is it keeps you honest because you've arranged it. You have to put it out on the yeah. day that you say you're going to. Sure, um, and um, which is great. Um, and I thought I was really scraping the bottom of the barrel because I'm just like, I'm going to list my top five cats that have been in space. Um, in, in like movies, not what the Soviets Everybody did. loves cats so, though. Yes. Animals Ooh, sell animals. stuff. Yes. Yeah. And like, yeah, send, send yes. put pictures of your pets in. Everyone loves that. Yes. Um, and yeah, I, I sent that out and it's been one of my most um, like Open interacted indeed. with yes. issues. So what I say is like when I send out the email to people who are not being very active, I send out an email and I say, um, you know, some, I don't remember the wording. It's a, it's an automated email. It's already made. So I just have to tag whoever I'm sending it to and it just goes. So I don't remember exactly what it says, but it does have a picture of a dog. It's not my dog. And it looks really sad. They're like, are we breaking up basically? Oh. And I usually get a ton That's of- That's emotional <laughs> manipulation, Shannon. <laughs> I, had, I had one guy respond. He says, keep sending me pictures of the dogs and I'll stay on your email list. <laughs> So, um, yes, yeah. animals work. People like animals. <laughs> and yeah, it's really easy to fall into a trap of just going, I'm boring. No one cares. And that's not necessarily true. <laughs> um, but just think of um, way, you know, think of angles that you might be able to present yourself, which are a bit different. There's like one author I follow who's in Alaska. And, you know, he talks a lot about it. Uh, always being light or never getting dark, depending what time of year it is, or the moose has wandered into his yard. Um, <laughs> you know, and um, there's like quite a well known author who will just start all his emails with hello from Salisbury, um, which is like the equivalent of, um, you know, saying hello from most middle of the range place you can, you know, dull place you can name, but, um, you know, he owns it. Um, Although he probably could he own it. it up one day, say hello from the moon, and people would be like, "What?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's about finding a way to be conversational and talk about what you're doing, and not uh, like. And <laughs> I, I actually, I genuinely received a newsletter from an author who was just complaining that their books weren't selling. Don't, don't do that. It was just like, uh, oh, my books aren't selling. I guess people don't like the genre written by people like me. And it's like, the, the, none of that is necessarily true. But, you know, complaining to the people who might buy your books is definitely not going to help. No, it's not going to convince them to buy your book. Convince them to hit the unsubscribe. <laughs> no. Yeah. I just, I still don't feel the cat yeah, I mean, newsletters. Like, if I'm interested in you, I'm keeping up with you either way. So, like, getting me to subscribe to your right. newsletter list, I, I feel like like that's the fake part. Because I'm like, I keep up with all of you on the social media and in, in, in chats. Like, if you have something going on, I'm most likely to know it already. I don't need to subscribe to your newsletter. Yeah, but you're, you're talking to your audience who you interact with on a, on a daily. It's a bit different when it comes to, let me try this author out. So, you have to kind of put yourself in the mindset of that reader, you know? Especially like some of the tactics I've used, newsletter builders, newsletter builders, you're, yeah, I, you're cold. You're coming cold to those people. People are. Um, and there's like groups of people that want to read newsletters, you know? Yeah. Not us, but other people. I know. I hate newsletters. Right. <laughs> but there are people I, who. I mean, I do know. personally. Like, I, I don't like but there's so many people that love them, you know, that love to get to want to hear about what their uh, their favorite author is doing, like, or, you know, or try new authors or whatever. So I definitely see the value in it, which is why I, I want to do it. It's just it's hard when you're battling with your own personal feelings of newsletters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's all like, I don't like I usually don't read newsletters. I don't like seeing them in my inbox. I don't like and that's just a personal thing. But as an author, I see the value in it. And it's like, so it's a sort of like, you know, breaking past that to try and, and to, uh, I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, it's like getting, getting into that mindset as opposed mm -hmm. to like my own personal views. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, and if they're there, I have, um, like Joanna Penn, I don't read her, um, 
fiction. I read her nonfiction. I listen to her. I read her emails all the way through. And most of the time it's just saying exactly what she said on her podcast. But I was like, there's gonna be something new in here. And there usually is something new, even it might be one sentence because you know, she's talking about things that I, she's a futurist and I'm a futurist. So she talks about things, you know, especially with the AI and all that stuff. And I, I love all that stuff. And so I love getting her viewpoint because she's got more experience with it than I do. So her, I, I read her newsletters all the way through. I'd have to say most everybody else, I kind of skim. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, I open my friend's newsletters. Right, right. I, just go yeah, to the bottom would, and then I click on the link for the stats and that's yeah. it. I don't read it. I don't care. What's really yeah, worth I'll doing is yeah. find, read, find writers in your genre, um, you know, who are doing the newsletter thing well and yeah. read yeah. what they're doing and find what works. And that's not necessarily easy because I went through like the top of the Amazon charts for my genre and found a lot of writers who only emailed when they had a new book out. Um, and because they're at the top of the charts, it's actually That's quite that regular that they have a new book out. But it's just going, got a new book. And when you're that big, that's fine. Um, but then I started subscribing to some who I was seeing on Facebook ads, like long enough that, well, the ad's still going. They must be, they're either doing all right or they're uh, throwing good money after bad. Um, but, but through doing that, I got to see who was uh you know sending regular emails how they were structuring it what that had in common with other ones i was reading and that was really helpful andrea pearson i signed up to her just to see how she set up her email sequence because she's very very good at that and she writes contemporary romance and fantasy although i don't think she's writing anything right now and nonfiction. so but there are some people that you could just sign up to just to see how they do their email sequence mm-hmm Okay. Yeah. I like that idea. Speaking of well, people that we... write different things though, if I write different things, do I have to have different newsletter lists? That's a person. Like, if it's thing. like wildly different. I, I think that's a very, very personal choice because to have two newsletters and keep them up, it's going to be a lot of work. Um, but there is a lot of value in separating those audiences. Uh, one thing that I heard that an, um, an author did, which I thought, okay, if I ever write another um, genre, which I do want to go into science fiction one day, um, is that what they do is just as a testing, I mean, you can ask your readers directly, hey, you know, would you prefer the fantasy stuff or the sci-fi stuff? And they can respond through a poll. But another way to do it where they don't know they're being tested is they, you know, look like, make it look like you're doing newsletter swaps, or you know how you put like books by other people your newsletter swapping with. Just put two books up. One is in one genre, one's another genre, not your books, two different genres. See who clicks on what. And then you'll get an that's idea. Really and then you can idea. separate out your, your emails from there. If you have an email that's just general, you can send it to everybody. If you have an email that's just for sci-fi, you tag your sci-fi fans, whatever it is. I mean, you could set that up though, right? Have like when people subscribe, have them click right. box sci-fi and yeah. have them click box fantasy, like right from the get-go, right? You There's can't, yeah. Okay. But if you already have your list and you're like, I'm branching out, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. good point. <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate that uh, we've been talking for a while now. I don't want to take up uh, too much of everyone's oh, yeah, time. So I think we'll uh, kind of oh, wrap, wrap things up there, but... Um, uh, Andy from Easy Graphics said he also signs up to other people just to see how they do their email sequence. So, yeah, thought that was interesting. Sorry. Uh, if we want to go around the hall one more time, uh, Anne, if you want to sign off and tell people where they can find you. Bye. Places. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I will be doing my regular sprints all next week. Next weekend, I'm part of the Storyteller Hearths write a thon. So, you'll be able to find me there. I'm on like three other sprints. Uh, between Saturday and Sunday, and the mind's the very last sprint, productivity sprint on Sunday. So that's going to be cool. And then the weekend after that is the AWC AuthorTube Writing Conference. So I'll, I'll be around YouTube quite a bit. <laughs> Yay. And I'm Becca. I have a YouTube channel and, and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and a newsletter. Go sign up on everybody's newsletters. Yeah, I know. You know, I think I'm going to do the Substack thing, though. I'm thinking. I'm definitely leaning towards that. So I may start over. I'm, I think I might start over. Maybe we should I'm do this again in, like, three you. months to see what we learned. I know. Yeah. I know. Right? And see how it went. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. So I hope people have found this useful. If uh, there's been anything that uh, you've learned, leave it in a comment uh, to let us know um, 
what you took away from this. Uh, this has been Publishing Ponderings. We will be back on the 8th of July going into more detail on these things we've mentioned called reader magnets oh and uh, talking about How the best practice of those. Um, so thank you everyone and we will see you then and uh, we will be back on this channel in two weeks with more flash fiction on Flash Aha! Flash Aha! Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh -huh.